Welcome. This particular video is to do with Zoom breakout rooms and how to pre-populate those rooms with your students. Before one can begin properly working with breakout rooms, it's very important that you check to make sure that your local application on your computer has the correct version of Zoom installed. To do this, click on your personal profile and then scroll down until you see something that says check for updates. And what you're looking for is 4.5 or higher in order to make this feature available. If that is not the case, then this same button here, check for updates, will then present you in this window with an update button where you should update your application. The first thing we must do is to log in to Zoom using the web browser. This gives you the greatest amount of control over these settings. It's more convenient and more usable than logging in using the Zoom application. Sign into your account if you haven't already. The next thing to do is to schedule a meeting. Enter a suitable name for the meeting and set up all the other parameters as you would then scroll down near the bottom of this page and you'll see a couple of meeting options. The most important is this one here, breakout room pre-assign. Make sure this is checked and then you can import your CSV file. Now what's the format of this CSV file? Well not to worry, when you click on this link you'll end up with this pop-up window and at the top of the pop-up window there is this template that they give you. So download that template to your local computer, open that file, and it has two columns. The first column, column A, is where you set up the different rooms. You can give it any title you like. Uh, these are just called room one, and room two, and room three. Then you need the email addresses of your students and your attendees. So put those email addresses they can be gathered from various sources, including a download from CAT courses. Enter the information, and you should end up with something similar to this. Here you can see I have filled in room one multiple times, as well as room two and three and four. The email addresses of the attendees are pre-populated. Save this file to your local computer. Go back to the import dialog box and now click on the browse button or you can drop the file directly on this window. So choose the latter option. And now you see the attendees are pre-populated by the labels of the rooms that you gave earlier. So room three has these three individuals, room one has these four individuals, etc., etc. A summary is presented at the top of this dialog box, four rooms with 13 participants in this particular case. If that day, during the meeting, uh, people arrive that were not in this list, you are able to add those people directly to any room, as well as manipulate things later on during the meeting, as I'll show you in a few moments. Save this file, and then you'll go back and save the actual meeting settings. We'll start the meeting in a moment and show you what happens. We are now ready to begin our first meeting, so click the Start Meeting button. The meeting will start. You can continue either on this browser window or switch over to your actual Zoom application, which we have done here. Now let me resize this so we can see everything. At this time, I don't have any real participants. This is the demonstration. But this is where the students would enter and sign on using their email addresses. Hopefully they came in through the learning management system, CAP courses in our case. So they have been pre-verified and all their credentials should match the Excel import that we made earlier with their appropriate email addresses. What actually happens next is dependent on a live session. But let me give you a preview of what you would do. During the actual session, when you decide to open the breakout rooms, 
you will click on the More button and choose Breakout Rooms. The students would still be in the main room and here you will get a list of people that are present that day. So only the people present will be then able to be viewable as present in those rooms and their names will be green. You may add additional rooms should you have a far greater attendance than you anticipated. You can use any of the other parameter boxes here to specify the parameters that are available for breakout rooms, including how long the closing of the breakout rooms will take place once you close the rooms. And this can go from 15 seconds to two minutes. And you can also recommend how long the breakout room should stay open should you wish to give an exercise, say, for 20 minutes. Just change this parameter here to 20 and the system will take care of the rest. You are not restricted to maintaining these lists. If you wish during another session to reorder the students automatically, you can do that by choosing the appropriate options down the bottom. If during a third session you want to take everybody back into their predefined rooms, then you choose this particular setting here. The best way to learn this is to play with the settings and see what happens. Get a couple of friends, have them register and see how they can be manipulated into their breakout rooms. In my opinion, breakout rooms is the greatest asset that Zoom offers other than the number of participants that can participate at any particular time. Thank you so much.